In this video, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about political communication messaging and what we mean by messaging when it comes to campaigns. So let's start off with uh, a brief definition here. This comes from uh, a masterclass session from David Axelrod and Karl Rove, who were kind of the architects, uh, respectively, of the Obama campaign and the George W. Bush campaigns. Uh, to both very successful campaign strategists and messengers. So, um, so they define campaign messaging as the overall image, narrative, and ideology that a political campaign is trying to communicate on behalf of a candidate. So really, this is just the overarching um, structure of how the campaign and the candidate themselves are, are presented and how they get that message out. So um, the elements of a campaign message, they provide four elements of a campaign message. So uh, first is a campaign narrative, which is just, again, kind of the underlying um, way that you tell that candidate's story. Uh, for example, in 1992, Bill Clinton, who was a relative unknown at that point, um, really was defined as the man from Hope. He was from Hope, Arkansas, so he was kind of presented as this man of the people, this, you know, every every man, so to speak, um, because he grew up in a small town and had a had an, a moving story, backstory, and things like that. So they really leaned into that and, uh, and, and developed a narrative around that, presenting him as this kind of really... Uh, homegrown, approachable kind of guy, and uh, so that was really their their narrative throughout. In fact, uh, you know, at that time had done some things that had never uh, been done before. President presidential candidates were really before that very, um, very kind of stoic and and aloof, so to, so to speak. Um, but Bill Clinton came on and played uh, saxophone on late night television and had a discussion on MTV about whether he wore boxers or briefs, things like that. That that people hadn't done before. So really kind of played into that homespun, I'm one of you type of, of uh, narratives that they had for him. So um, so they had that uh, campaign narrative set up around that. So uh, again, that story is important for many candidates. And you can see that in a lot of different uh, elections. You also have campaign arguments. What is it that, that the, uh, the the candidate is saying, this is why you should vote for me and, and that kind of thing. You want something that's going to stick. Famously, in the 1980 election, uh, in the debates against Jimmy Carter, one of the one of the best kind of lines, so to speak, that that Ronald Reagan had that really uh, struck home for people and really really stayed with them is the just very simple question: Are you better off today than you were four years ago? And the answer for a lot of people was no, I'm not better off today than I was four years ago. In which case, uh, Jimmy Carter then should not be given another. Four years as president and you know, as such so his argument there was you're not better off now than you were four years ago so why would you put this person in office again for another four years and uh, so uh, that is something that Reagan was able to stick with very successfully and it implied that um, Carter had not done the job that he, that he should have done and could have done so now it's time for somebody else and he was the man to take that over so that was his argument and so uh, candidates try and find some stick points and some arguments as to why they are the best person for uh, for the job at that time. We also have people that kind of come with a campaign brand, so to speak. And I, sorry, I'm kind of covering up Bernie Sanders there, but um, they come with a campaign brand. You know, who are they? Are they outside? We're going to talk about the different types of candidates here. But for example, Donald Trump in 2016 uh, framed himself as the outsider. He was going to drain the swamp. He's going to, you know, he's not a politician, and uh, so. That was really his brand, and and Bernie's brand, Bernie Sanders' brand, is kind of this, you know, very very progressive, uh, do things differently, not just you know make small changes, but let's really shake things up, uh, and that kind of brand. So so, oftentimes as part of a campaign message, a campaign communication strategy, uh, candidates will develop a sort of brand and, and you know way that they can uh, present themselves to the, the voting public in that way. And then finally, you have campaign slogans, which we're all probably familiar with. Famously, Obama's in, in 2008 was Yes, We Can. Trump in 2016 was, was Make America Great Again. And this is not a new thing. This goes this goes back to, you know, Tippecanoe and Tyler, too. And uh, when, when, uh, back in the 1800s when they were running. Um, and certainly more recently, but still uh, far enough away, was I Like Ike and things like that. When Dwight Eisenhower was running, I Like Ike. So anyway, campaign slogans are nothing new, but it's just, again, something short and sweet and simple that will stick uh, stick with an audience and, and just kind of um, 
further the brand, in a sense, of that candidate. So this is the four basic elements of campaign messaging that need to be considered and need to be um, really fleshed out by, by each campaign. As I said before, there are different types of candidates, different uh, ways in which candidates will sort of frame themselves. And so, for example, um, one you have is an incumbent, which is essentially the person who's running for re-election. Right? So um, in the 2020 election, that would be Donald Trump. He's the incumbent president. Uh, in 2012, well, Barack Obama was running as an incumbent. He was, had had one term as president was running again. So so you have the person who's running for office and trying to retain that office. That would be the incumbent. You have the status quo. Whether that's the incumbent or whether it's somebody new, the status quo would imply um, somebody who says, this is going well, let's keep it going. Um, so, uh, you know, getting away from incumbents, an example of this would have been in 1988 when George George H.W. Bush was running for president. He was coming off of eight years as vice president. So his message as a candidate in 1988 was basically, look, the last eight years have been great. Let's keep it going. And uh, now I'm ready to take over for Ronald Reagan. And we're just going to keep things rolling with some minor changes. And, and you know, but but we're doing right. So um, anyway, so there's a lot of candidates who run this. And famously, uh, Abraham Lincoln kind of popularized this phrase when he was running for a re-election about not changing horses midstream. And then Franklin Roosevelt used that again when he was running for re-election at different times. Don't change horses midstream. So basically, we've got a good thing going. Um, let's not let's not get too far away from that. Would be the status quo argument in that type of candidate. And then you have a change agent. Somebody who comes in and says, we need to do things differently, whether that's in big ways or small ways. So uh, recently, Barack Obama would have been a uh, good example of that. He basically said, Look, we need to change things up. We need to do things differently. We need to think differently. Uh, I guess you could say in some ways Trump was that in 2016 as well, that, uh, that we need to, to think differently and do things differently. But, but you know, really in the spirit of change agent, Barack Obama would be a much better example of that in 2008. Then you have what we call an insurgent. And really Trump and Bernie Sanders would both be those type of candidates, Trump in 2016 in particular, and Bernie Sanders pretty much any time. The insurgent coming in and saying, well, let's totally revamp things. We need a radical new direction and, and a new way of thinking about things entirely. And uh, so you have this insurgent come in, oftentimes from outside of the party or from uh, the, the, the further off reaches of a particular party and come in and, and really make a splash, get some support and make, them, make a name for themselves and, and really have an impact on the election uh, as an insurgent then. And finally, you have an establishment um, candidate, which is not necessarily an incumbent, but but somebody who represents the major wing of the party and is just kind of the expected uh, expected heir, so to speak. Um, so, for example, in 2016, Hillary Clinton would have represented an establishment uh, candidate, again, well known, um, well in line with party uh, ideals, and uh, and considered a leader in the party even before she was nominated uh, for the presidential ticket. So just a very uh, known quantity and an establishment candidate. What they call her. So, and the reason we need to consider this is because each of these ca candidates will have a different type of message. They need a different type of messaging. And uh, so we need to, to understand how we're trying to sell this candidate and what that candidate is trying to sell themselves as. And uh, the messaging should then follow along uh, with that. Finally, there's some different messaging tools that you can use as a campaign and that campaigns do use. Um, for example, correspondence with supporters, whether this direct mail or, or a campaign mail or whatever, but they correspond with the supporters. This is to shore up their, their base and to shore up their supporters. Also for fundraising and different different uh, reasons uh, along those lines, but, uh, but we need to correspond with people who are already known supporters. Well, we also use, or not, we, campaigns also use media stories. Uh, which is why you see them on the TV doing interviews a lot and different things like that. It's sort of free advertisement, but but it also helps them get their message out in a very direct way uh, and in a way that's somewhat more within their control as well, which is important. So uh, as opposed to the debates and things which are more, um, you may get some policy there, but but it's really a lot of back and forth and you don't get as much chance to really sell people on your end of things so much as combat the other person's uh, ideas. So media stories are very important to candidates as well. That's why they present themselves to the media and allow uh, media access so much. 
campaign ads. Again, very direct control of these, obviously. So campaign ads are important in, in getting their message out because they have, you know, just, again, 100% control over what they say and how they how they spin it and uh, what kind of tone they have. So campaign ads are very important. Uh, rallies and, and what we would call stump speeches, so just getting out and uh, speaking to crowds in different areas, especially they try and hit, uh, campaigns will try and hit um, battlegrounds or swing states and different places like that where they feel like they can make an impact. But this is another way to directly take your message uh, to people and also to directly interact with people, which can have a, a large impact. So, so candidates will oftentimes uh, put on rallies and, and give what we call their stump speeches, just kind of their the speech they give over and over again, basic policy elements and things. Uh, you'll see much more now, obviously, we see much more use of new media, uh, starting with the Internet, but also then extending into social media. And now especially text messaging has become a big uh, tool for campaigns. So, um, so you see the use of new media now in sharing campaign messages and really uh, interacting with uh, with the voting constituency then. So if you have any questions in general about campaign messaging, this is just an overview of campaign messaging. And so we're obviously going to dig into this more as the course goes along. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that I can. In the meantime, get out there and really start paying attention to that to this political messaging and the, and the political communication that we see in these elections.